anyways, oh my God. Um, I don't want to talk about this early on, but I have to out of respect. Uh, it's a sad, 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 sad day. Uh, the passing of Vi- the great Vinnie Paul. Um, drummer of obviously Pantera, Damage Plan, and Hell Yeah. Good Lord. What a, what a loss. Can't even, can't even put it into words. And I was lucky enough to meet him. He was a big comedy fan. And I remember the first time I met him, I was opening for the late, great Charlie Murphy. This is what happens when you get older. Like half your stories, just like half the people in them are like fucking dead. It sucks. Um, but anyways, yeah, me, Charlie, and Donnell were on tour, and we did the Addison Improv. And uh, I remember that that was one of those shows, one of the few times I ever I went over without even realizing it. I always knew when I was going over, but I did like 40 minutes, and I was supposed to do like 25. It's just one of those, I just went up there, was talking, and I don't know what happened. And um, Charlie was cool with it, but I was embarrassed because I never do that shit. And it's a real cunty thing to do. And it's something, you know, makes the headliner's job more difficult because you ate up all of that extra time wearing them out and all of that shit. So uh, I do remember that from that weekend. But one of those shows, it wasn't the show when I went over, but uh, I was standing after the show selling my CDs. This is how long ago this was. It was right around, uh, it was 2004. His brother was still alive. Um. And I was just standing there and I just looked up and he, and he was standing right there, Vinny fucking Paul. And, you know, it wasn't like he was Vinny Paul offstage. He just was Vinny Paul. He had the fucking cowboy hat on, you know, this shirt with flames on it and shit, these crazy cowboy boots. And he was just standing there with a big smile on his face. And I was just like, oh, I mean, this guy is like a guy I saw on the cover of Modern Drummer. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was like, holy shit, you're fucking Vinny Paul. <laughs> He just started laughing and, you know, it was super complimentary about the show and all that. And then he invited us out. Uh, he had his own c- club out there, gentlemen's club. And we all went out there and he was nice enough. I actually sat with him in his club for like 45 minutes, like a total drum nerd and asked him all of these questions about, um, drum parts that he did and and um like who were the guys that he listened to and uh and you know i asked i was like you know who do you think like, one of the underrated drummers out there and he was like oh alex van halen you know and we went, went on and on about him and it's kind of ironic because i really feel that Vinny and dimebag were the eddie and alex i should say alex and eddie of their generation and um it just sucks man he was just such a nice guy and then after that um he probably came out to two or three other shows and he always was smiling, always was just the greatest, nicest guy. And, um, it's, I don't know. One of the reasons why I never got into double bass playing was because so many people, I just felt like once like they, all their fills, everything was just the, their fucking feet and their hands stunk and it didn't groove. It just was going nine zillion miles an hour. And, you know, it was impressive to look at, but it didn't it didn't give me the chills. It didn't make me want to do it. And he was a guy that changed that. And I, I when I listened to him play, um, my younger brothers were into Pantera. I fucked up. I never saw him. Uh, I remember one of my brothers went to go see him, was telling me how amazing the show is. But to be honest with you, like, I, I just, you know, concerts were different back then. <laughs> <laughs> you could get fucked up at a concert and there was no cell phone footage. You just got fucked up and that was it. And there was like mosh pits. Like it just, it had changed. And I got a little bit older. I was in my mid twenties basically when they came around and I had already started doing stand up and shit. And, um, you know, I remember going to a couple of, uh, you know, concerts like ACDC and shit and people were doing blow and it was, you know, it was a little fucking, you know, there was, you you had to be like a certain level of fucked up just so you could stay relaxed so you could kind of navigate it. You know what I mean? You couldn't be sitting there looking fucking nervous. And I, you know, and that was just at like ACDC, which was always like a fun show. So like with this Pantera came in, it was a new level of aggression and anger. Certainly, you know, with Phil singing, I had never heard anything like that. And um, 
you know, just the way I was just, I just had this feeling. My, I was, I was too afraid. I was like, am I fucking going to go down there? My fucking orange hair trying to grow it out. And it just gets bigger and bigger. And I look like Bernie from room 222. And there's a mosh pit. I'm going to get this. Sh- you know, how I always got over with people was making them laugh. And the show was going to be too fucking loud. So if they were just going to look at me the way I looked, I mean, I, w- I, I just felt like it, it wasn't going to go well. <laughs> So I was a fan from afar, and I really fucked up by not seeing those guys. And um, I remember when Vinny came down on the show, he said, "Hey, you know, I got this this new uh, this new band. I think it was yeah, it was it was Damage Plan." He said, "We're playing New York." Uh, he said, "He goes, he goes, I'll hook you up." I said, "Really?" He said, "Dude, he goes, you can fucking stand right behind me while I play the whole show." And of course, um, I had some fucking road gig when they came to town. I think Florentine went. So I remember talking to him about it, and I was so fucking envious that he got to go, and I, I didn't get to go. So I never saw him play live. But, um, you know, since doing that Dean Del Rey show where I had to learn how to play, uh, I butchered the song, but I tried to learn how to play that song by Motley Crue, Livewire, which had the double bass, you know, basic thing in there. Since then, I've just kind of gotten addicted to it, and I um, was listening to all of the Pantera stuff on a whole nother like level and um you know Cowboys from Hell and fucking um I'm broken and this love just loving the the drum parts are just so fucking perfect in all of those and I was just talking I was talking to my drum teacher literally that day of how great um Vinnie Paul was um with his work in that band and and then, like, fucking, it was so weird that night. Then all of a sudden, I got that text. I couldn't fucking believe it. And um, super sad, but um, I don't know. Like, the only good thing that I could say is the, the, guy, the mark that the guy left is he, he won't be forgotten. And obviously, his brother hasn't been. So, anyways, that's my little, my little point of view on uh, truly one of the great artists that I ever heard or, or, or got to, I don't know, listen to whatever, hang out with or anything. So, so that sucks. And that's sad. So I don't know where the fuck to go from here. How do, how do you turn it back to being funny? You know? All right. We got some great emails this week. The first one, Vinny Paul. Hey, Bill. By now, I'm sure that you heard that Vinny Paul passed away last Friday. Uh, much like you talked about Malcolm Young after his death. I feel like Vinny was another one who just lived an amazing life. One of the great drummers to ever get behind the kit. I got to tell you, like all everything that I saw f- on Twitter from all these big time rock stars it, over and over and over again, other than stating the obvious, what a monster, amazing drummer he was. Everybody just talked about what a, what a nice guy he was. Um, anyways, he said, I was too young when Pantera was leaving their mark on the metal scene through the 90s, so I never got to see Pantera play live before they disbanded. However, I did get to see Vinny play with Hell Yeah back in the day, uh, back in 2016 at uh, Rockville Festival in Jacksonville, Florida. He was quite simply incredible. Oh, this is a cool story. I read this before um, the podcast, something I never do, but I saw it said Vinny Paul, so I wanted to read it. Uh, he said, I remember being pretty close to the front of the stage, and Vinny was the first band member to come out before the show started. When he stood up behind the drum kit, he had this smile on his face like he was just really happy to be there. He twirled his drumstick at the whole crowd, sal- uh, crowd, saluted by putting his fist in the air, and then the madness began. But for most of the show, I couldn't take my eyes off of him because of how good he was. Oh, that's awesome. And even though he was that good, the biggest memory I have of him was that he was smiling the whole show like he just loved playing and seeing people enjoy themselves as much as he was. He will be missed by more. He will be missed by more than we know. I don't know if that sentence makes sense. Um, If you remember, please crank a Pantera song up as loud as you can today. I'm sure Vinny will hear it. Best wishes. Um, Hey, I... um, Best which is incompetent, it said. Um, well, I was already listening to the fucking shit every day anyways. You know what? You know what's a great album? Great live album is there, 101 Proof. Um, it's such a badass album. One of my favorite things is when they play I'm Broken. And Phil, as Phil's doing the intro, Vinny, Vinny's already counting in the song just how tight they were. He's like, well, song of the night's called I'm Broken. I'm having a good time. All right. 
I mean, I don't know if you guys believe in an afterlife, uh, which I thought about a lot when Vinny passed. You know, there was all that talk about now he's reunited, reunited with his brother, and I, I was definitely thinking, you know, I really hope that that happens. You know? Um, so let's say that it does. Okay? 